Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do a Q&A about the Akashic Records. So I've received questions on my Instagram. I get them via email. I get them in readings. I get even in courses. So I thought today I'd just put together some of the most common questions that I get about the Akashic Records and just clear some stuff up and I think it'd be fun just to have some coffee and chat. Yeah, and then maybe you guys can also post your questions below in the comments so that I can do another video, another Q&A video and answer a little bit more profoundly, a little deeper onto some of these questions that you guys might have. So let's get right into it. All right, let's get into it. I've got my coffee. I've got my phone with my questions. I would encourage you if you haven't already watched what the Akashic Records are, I would definitely watch that video. I'll link that right now. And let's get right into the question, shall we? First question is, how do you connect to the Akashic Records? There's generally one way to connect to the Akashic Records is through a prayer or a verse, depends on who you learn with. Um, there are different verses. As a, an Akashic Records reader, there's three levels. And on the third level, you're able to create your own, you're able to download your own verse or prayer so you can pass that on to your students. With our Zoom courses and all that, we pass our own verse over to students and they're able to connect to the Akashic Records of the verse. So a lot has to do with intention. So it's one part, how you prepare for the reading of kind of like grounding your energy. Another part is the intention you put into the reading and then saying the verse with a lot of intention and with, um, yeah, just conviction and, and really just trusting that you have a connection to the Akashic Records. That being said, it's very common for people to have issues. So I've actually created a video about that. I'll link that here too. I think that was a few videos ago. And really there are a few things to think about when you're connecting, but really if you have a good intention, if you have your prayer, if you've done your practices, anyone can connect and really receive information from the Akashic Records. And after that, really, it's about you asking the questions because we have the free will to just open them up and do nothing. But obviously we're connecting because we want answers. We want we want to understand things. We want to understand patterns and, and issues we're going through or things we're feeling or things that are happening in our life. So generally that's the way. And I don't, I don't know any other way to connect. I'm sure there are people that connect to it in a different way, but that's generally the way most people learn. Next question, what are the Akashic Records used for? The Akashic Records generally are used for you connecting. And this is in the case of opening your own or opening somebody else's, right? If you opened your own Akashic Records, you're going to be using it to understand yourself better, to ask questions and receive guidance, to understand your path a little bit more, maybe even connect with your purpose. But uh, another big part of it is just healing. And that would be the main part. That would be what's at the top. It's like you want to heal everything that's going on or that has gone on or the trauma or or the hurt or the repetitive issues you want you want to heal those and you can get healing through asking questions and working through those things for me a big part of that was journaling so I would open my Akashic Records journal write feel let out and not judge what's going on because that's the main thing about the Akashic Records it's we don't judge they don't judge there's no judgment it's all about accepting being open to that energy and receiving when you open other people's records that could be also about healing, but also understanding things a little bit better. So I do find that I get a lot of people that want to understand their purpose, their mission. And in a lot of ways, it's also about them just understanding things so they can heal it. So when you bring certain things to your awareness, certain issues and certain, it's like kind of like, connecting the dots, right? You connect the dots and you're like, oh, wow, I get that now. I understand it. That makes sense. And then you're able to kind of let it go or heal it. So in both cases, it is about healing, but I think when you're opening your own, it's more about your connecting to your intuition, your inner knowing, connecting with your soul. So you feel like you're you're elevating your energy. And with someone else opening it, they're downloading the information for you. They're connecting to your records and getting that information for you. It does bring a sense of peace. It does help with healing. It helps with so many things. It's just somebody externally doing that for you. Next question is how long can you stay connected to the Akashic Records? So this is a bit of a, like this really depends. So when you're first starting, and this is what we teach in our courses is you start slow. You, you need to progress. It's kind of like the gym, right? You're not gonna go and lift a hundred pound dumbbells. You're gonna start with maybe the fives, right? And you're gonna work your way up until you can 
lift the heaviest that you can lift. There is no right or wrong answer here. I know cases of people that have just started opening their Akashic Records and they're fine with opening them for an hour. Where there's some people they're in it for 15 minutes and they're already feeling drained of energy. The point here is regardless of how long you're connected, as long as you're not draining your energy and making yourself feel extremely exhausted and tired and actually hindering your healing and your immune system, then really it's up to you to figure out what that time is. Usually when you start, it is, you start in increments. So it's like, let's start with 15, then I'm gonna go move to 30 minutes. I'm gonna move to 45 minutes, I'm gonna move to an hour. So generally speaking, for me personally, when I'm connected to somebody else's Akashic Records, an hour and a half in, I'm already, my energy's starting to dwindle. I'm not gonna receive information as clearly. My body's getting tired and I need to just kind of close them down, rest, go out for a walk or do something different, change my energy. And then I can go back into somebody else's records or my own records in a little bit. But I need that break because sometimes it can, it can be a little too much. And I think a lot of times it's easy for us to think that we can and then we're like connected for two hours with our own records and all of a sudden we close them and we're like, whoa, wow, that was intense, right? And I've been in my records sometimes for five, six hours and I'm not necessarily doing a lot of stuff with it. Maybe I'm writing a blog post. Maybe I'm recording a podcast episode. Maybe I'm meditating and, and I feel fine, but I will listen to my body and figure out where that threshold is of when it's when I'm going overboard. So I guess my advice here would be start slow. Start with 15 minutes, move up to maybe 20, 25, 30 minutes, move up to 45 minutes. And this is also while you're channeling and asking for guidance because I think it's a little bit different when you're connected but not really doing anything with the records. They might just help you feel less anxiety, feel more grounded in your energy. But if you're asking questions and receiving, that's when your energy can feel a little bit more depleted. So that's when I would say, you know, when you're actually channeling and receiving, be careful, listen to yourself, you know, work yourself up to a number like what is it an hour two hours what what feels comfortable I mean the reality is you probably won't be sitting for two hours channeling for us really that only happens when we're in the podcast that we might do like an hour episode and then when I'm channeling for myself or when we're working on the manual that could be a couple of hours of work but we break it up we try not to do an hour like we'll do an hour two hours but we're not gonna do ten hours of channeling it just makes no sense right listen to yourself pay attention to the signals you know some good signals are my eyes are burning I feel really exhausted my body's just feeling off I feel fuzzy those are really good indications that it might be time for you to close them down for a bit rest recuperate your energy eat something that's gonna kind of replenish your your glucose and the proteins in your body that should do the trick next question is how many levels of the Akashic records are there and what do each mean or what are each for there are three levels this is what I was taught and this is kind of how I um, approach also teaching. There are three levels. Level one would be you opening your own Akashic Records. Level two would be you learning to read somebody else's Akashic Records. And level three would be kind of where you've just surpassed all that and you've become a teacher. You've become kind of like a guide or a mentor to other people, which also means level three, you're able to download information very clearly. You're you're kind of like at a point where your Akashic Records might open up on their own, but also this level three is when you download your own information to create your own maybe course and teach. So that means downloading your own opening verse or prayer. You know, I would never share whatever prayer or verse my teachers passed on to me because that's that's not how it works. You need to create your own. You need to create your own and teach that to the people that are attracted to your energy and that want to work with you. Each one has its own little things about them um, and there is a sequence to them so I wouldn't expect anybody to go to level two or go straight to level three. Like you need to work your way up just as you work your way up with how long you connect and how you receive information. It's the same way with this. It's really interesting to see how things progress and how you become a reader for somebody else. If that's something that's really calling out to you, like listen to that calling, it might be part of your purpose. Next question, how does the channeling process work? So this is very different for everybody and not everybody's the same kind of channel. So I think a good example and we talk a lot about in the podcast is how I'm a very different channel from my sister. And we're both Akashic Record readers, we read for other people and we also read our own. But 
if you can, if you've had a reading with us or you've seen us how we speak when we channel on the podcast, you'll realize that we're very different and our energies are very different. So for me, it is a lot about feeling. I will feel things and that's not how I expected to be as a channel, I guess, when I was younger. It was more like, well, I just have to receive information. I felt like it was all going to be downloads and visions because that's what a lot of people around me were experiencing. But that's just not how it works. And I think that's where we need to take away the expectation when we start to learn to be our own reader and realize we are all unique and we're all here to connect spiritually and very differently. So the moment I kind of let go of that expectation and said, okay, like I'm open to receive information whatever way I need to was the moment that I connected with the feelings. And the moment I connected with the feelings was the moment all of this information started flooding in and I could understand things better and they were supporting me when i say that like the masters and guides were supporting me in a completely different way but i had to trust i had to trust that you know some people will be very much like like me they'll feel things some people will be very visual some people will maybe hear things a little bit more but in general what i find at least from all the people that we've taught and that have been my path it is a, a lot of feeling and visions and knowing some people are just I think they've surpassed that level of being a reader, an Akashic Records reader. They might also be on the spectrum of being a little bit more psychic and connecting to other energies. So it's really interesting how things can fuse and things can mix and match. And there isn't just one way to be a reader and you have to discover that. And that's part of that journey of realizing how you are as a channel and how that needs to show up and how you need to show up for others and for yourself. Next question, how do I discover what kind of channel I am? And this is pretty much what I just said now. It's realizing first it's a journey and realizing that you should not have any expectations. Like you need to leave those expectations out the door. There's no room for them here because that's ego. That's you overthinking and going into that thinking process and not allowing things to flow and you going more into your feminine energy. I think really it is trial and error and it is with the process of practicing. I really discovered that through practicing a lot and opening my records every day. And even with our courses, we talk a lot about our homework. And it's not, you know, it's not like you just do the course and you're, ch you're channeling, it's you have to do your homework afterwards. It's putting in that time and effort and consistency that creates that knowledge of what kind of channel you are and you being open to receiving the information the way it needs to come through for you. And what I can say, it's so different for everybody and there is no like one size fits all. Be curious, like be open to, to discovering how that is for you and how that works for you it's it's a beautiful process but at the same time it's some people can get very frustrated and i can understand that because i felt that way at the beginning of my path but once i just accepted myself and knew that i was unique and that i loved myself and that i was i was going to do whatever it took to understand myself that was a moment that it just all clicked so i think you know if there are some people out there listening that you feel like maybe you're not, you know, your self-esteem isn't where it needs to be, you don't believe in yourself, that might hold you back from discovering that aspect of yourself. So work on that alongside the channeling and the connection is gonna be a really big part of, of this process and this journey. Okay, this is a good question. Um, how do you know you are connected to the Akashic Records? I think for me, the best way is opening my records and asking, literally just sitting here like I am kind of, or at my desk, at my chair, how, wherever you channel, doesn't matter. And asking, are my Akashic records open? You're gonna get a yes or a no. And whatever comes through first, trust that. And ask it again if you have to. If you're journaling, you write it down. You know, if you have your piece of paper and your pen, ask, like write the question down and see what comes through. I think that's a really good way, but also there's other physical ways because a lot of the information, not a lot, all of the information, the information is received through your crown chakra. So this is up at the top of your head. Sometimes if we just kind of hover our hands above our head, you'll feel heat. And that heat, like I feel that right now, and I didn't open my Akashic Records, but they told me that they're open. And I know they're open because I know I'm flowing with what I'm saying and talking. And I'm talking about the Akashic Records, so usually they open on their own in that sense. If I put my hands above here, I'll feel heat. You don't have to touch your head. It can just be right above and you just feel if the heat's coming through. You might be asking that question in the sense of, oh my gosh, I feel so exhausted. I feel drained of energy. Are my Akashic, that happened to me at the beginning of my journey. I had read through a, an Akashic Records manual, didn't open them yet they opened because I was thinking about them and the energy of the manual connected me to it without me even realizing it. I had two days where I was just completely exhausted. I thought I was like, I thought I was sick. And I went into class with my teacher and she says, ask, 
ask if they're open. I said, are my, and I, I got this like resounding, like I, I saw the, the words yes and I heard the word yes. And I was like, oh shoot, she's like, close them. And then instantly you'll feel better if you have some of those symptoms of them being open for too long. The problem here is a lot of times that we don't trust those messages that are coming through. So my advice would be just trust. If you're getting a yes, trust that yes, they're open. Okay, what do I do now? Do I need to close them because I'm really exhausted? Or should I just start channeling? And that could be something you, you incorporate into the beginning of your practice, right? So you open your Akashic Records, you ask, are my Akashic Records open? Yes, great, I'm trusting, I'm open. Let me start asking questions that are gonna help my healing and my hair self. And then when they're closed, they're closed, I'll close them. It's that simple sometimes. And not all of us are gonna feel physical symptoms when we connect to the Akashic Records. I kinda wanna say that now because people expect all these physical things to be happening. No, I open my own Akashic Records, I feel nothing. And it's different for everybody. So you have to really just figure out how that works for you. And maybe one day I, I connect to my Akashic Records and I actually feel it. But 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just like, oh, I feel normal. I feel maybe a little bit more grounded. But there's days that I don't connect that I feel grounded. It's hard to tell, right? So ask that question and they're going to give you guidance. Your masters and guides will give you that answer. Just trust it. And I got one more question. Should you energetically protect yourself when you connect to the Akashic Records? I don't always protect myself. I don't generally do it, but it's good if you want to do it. So there's diff different hermetic protections that you can do. Um, one being like the golden bubble. I think there's like, I think it's called the golden bubble of protection. So it's literally just visualizing this bubble surrounding you and protecting you. And you can put that bubble around you. It's like, Obviously, it's like this imaginary bubble. You can put that bubble around you at any time. It takes minutes or seconds, depending on how much intention you put into it. That being said, I don't believe that you necessarily need that amount of protection or this crazy protection when you go into the Akashic Records. It is a very highly protected space and energy. Unless you feel that that's gonna help you connect more or you know that you feel that you need that protection, some people might need it. I'm, I'm, I'm not like downplaying anything here. Some people might need that protection. Find whatever hermetic protection you resonate with. For me, that golden bubble of protective light, I just imagine I close my eyes. I, like, I personally like to put my hands on my heart see that bubble protecting me and kind of put an intention to it. So it's basically kind of like saying, I allow anything that's good to come in, anything that's bad and that is not of my higher good is not allowed in. It's like a hard no, it's a boundary and that helps. And you can also think about it in this sense, like anything that's not mine that I'm holding on to right now, that needs to be released right now before that bubble comes in. So you can kind of put that, that kind of like claws in there, I guess. There are so many different hermetic protective uh, rituals. Do a little Google search, check on YouTube. I'm sure there's tons of people that are sharing this stuff. It's not really my expertise, but I found, I found that one and I like it. And this is the one we use and we kind of teach people and it works, it helps. Um, and sometimes it's just the intention that we're putting into it that really helps protect us. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll definitely do another Q and A if you guys like, just Pop in the comments below any questions that you might want answered and I'll be happy to create another video for you guys. And if you haven't already checked out, I, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I've done a video about what the Akashic Records are, how they help you heal, and even some other really cool videos. And there's gonna be more coming up. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to help support my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.